Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. As the dollar and the euro continue their slow path to recovery, some people are trading in their money for a currency that is already booming. It's called Bitcoin and it's the currency of the internet. Invented five years ago by an anonymous programmer, Bitcoin has no government tied to it, no delay when sending money and few if any transaction fees. And while many people still may not consider Bitcoin real money, it's making some people really rich. It has been the scene of many uprisings. Berlin, a city both elegant and defiant. At its heart lies a neighborhood called Kreuzberg, the most radical of all. It's a kind of revolutionary area. People here are looking for alternatives to existing systems. It is here, from behind his bar, that York Platzer leads a modern-day rebellion against the current financial system and the governments that control it. It's a digital money that can be transferred at almost no cost in split seconds around the globe from human to human. What he's talking about is Bitcoin, an online currency that is taking off. That is 0.0353 Bitcoin, please. Bitcoin is different than anything you're used to. The dollar, the yen, the euro, currencies are traditionally connected to governments and to banks. But not Bitcoin. That's what makes it so appealing to the radical in York. No president, no king in this world can stop a Bitcoin transaction. Governments accustomed to paper money protected by bank rules are struggling, trying to figure out what to do about this new virtual currency built for the Internet age. Some countries have made it illegal, others are trying to regulate it. And just this month, the United States held Senate hearings into Bitcoin. Bitcoin should not be regulated, Bitcoin cannot be regulated, and governments should just take the fingers off Bitcoin. Aaron Koenig is a libertarian who's very public about his view of governments and their banks. We need a different monetary system, and Bitcoin can be it. He blames them for the world's financial woes. The current monetary system is a big fraud. It's a big Ponzi scheme. All this financial crisis we've been through, it, it's all very much linked to the monetary system that we have, which is a very bad and, and evil system. And while he doesn't believe in banks, he does believe in Bitcoin. I'm happy not to have my money in the bank because I don't trust banks. I'd rather have my money in gold, silver, real estate, Bitcoin, because that's safe. Germany is the only country that's given Bitcoin the official stamp of approval, deeming it private money. So here, at about two dozen shops that accept it, you can use Bitcoin just like you'd use a euro. Jörg's bar was the first to accept Bitcoin and has become a gathering place for believers. We are from Holland. We made a decision to make a road trip to Berlin. I want to spend some bitcoins uh, because they are uh, one of the places to be at the moment. Jorg is absolutely certain bitcoin will eventually be used everywhere. I'm as confident about that as I was 25 years ago about email when everybody told me, Jörg, who is ever going to send these funny computer to computer messages? That's got no future. Bitcoin has been around since 2008, when this email was sent out to a group of techies. It talked about a new electronic cash system, and it was authored by Satoshi Nakamoto, a person or a group of people who remain a mystery. The premise of Bitcoin can be tricky to explain. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, virtual money, that exists in cyberspace. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency. While governments make new money by printing more at the mint, bitcoins are mined, not unlike gold. Except here, a supercomputer, or even a computer whiz, mines new bitcoins by cracking a complex code unique to each bitcoin. With bitcoin, miners use special software to solve math problems and are issued a certain number of bitcoins in exchange. When a code is cracked, the person who owns the computer now has a new bitcoin. 
And like a lump of gold, they can sell it or use it to buy things. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net without going through a bank or clearinghouse. And again, like gold, the number of Bitcoin is finite, capped at 21 million. We wanted to try out Bitcoin. So equipped with a digital wallet that we downloaded onto a smartphone, we gave it a shot. The process is relatively simple. That's my wallet with my code. Our phone scans a code and bitcoins instantly go from our digital wallet to the stores. And you've received 0 0.01572 bitcoin. Bitcoin to me, yes. Unlike a debit card, the transaction doesn't go through a bank. And unlike a credit card, there were almost no fees. You can really compare to the internet in the early 90s. Not that many people used it. And when you try to explain it to somebody, well, everybody would say, who needs that? It's just for computer freaks. I heard it all before. Hello? Aaron Koenig is so convinced Bitcoin is the way of the future that he's running a Bitcoin exchange. This may not look like a typical trading floor, but it works the same way. People meet to buy and sell Bitcoin. 100 euros would be 0.79. But Bitcoin has another, very different kind of believer than anti-government libertarians. At the epicenter of capitalism in downtown Manhattan, we caught up with the speculators. The problem being a Bitcoin company right now is they want to invest too much money. Jaron Lukasiewicz, Charlie Shrem, and David Johnston. Think of them as the new generation of dot-com millionaires. Every major venture capital firm in the country is looking to invest in our company, and they're very serious about many companies in the space. All three created Bitcoin startups and reaped the rewards of investing early. When you first bought Bitcoin, how much was it worth? 35. I think 17. $14.56. And how much is it worth today? Gox, I saw this morning at 200, and it stands at 190. 190. That's incredible. Yeah. It's just the beginning. Since we recorded that interview in October, Bitcoin has multiplied more than fivefold in price, cracking the $1,000 mark for one Bitcoin. So there are still millionaires to be made. Absolutely. There are billionaires to be made. Perhaps the first billionaires to be made will be the Winklevoss twins of Facebook fame, who reportedly own 1% of all Bitcoin. Today, Charlie Shrem co-owns a bar he bought with Bitcoin, pays his rent with Bitcoin, and he, along with Jaron and David, hope their companies will drive Bitcoin into the mainstream. Something that can be used for someone in their everyday life, the soccer moms, the grandmas, that's when Bitcoin's going to really be valuable. And that's what we're all trying to do. To people who say this isn't real money, you say what? The dollar isn't real money. 